Hey everybody, this is Pete, and in this video I want to kick off a quick mini-series of videos dealing with some of the really cool things I learned from AU 2020. Even though it was virtual and I missed getting to see everybody in person, it doesn't mean there wasn't really great information and lots of things to learn. So in today's tip, I'm going to demonstrate how we can rename the origin geometry and include parameters to help make our templates a little bit more effective. So <clears throat> here we have a conveyor model where I've got a conveyor bed and a conveyor leg component. And you can see that I'm using Z as up. So this is a very common technique in Inventor if you're gonna be sending data to Revit, to AutoCAD, etc., where they use the Z as the elevation dimension or Z. And you can see I've got that set up here for my conveyor bed as well. So it's really helpful to make a template where we utilize that orientation. That way everybody understands, based on the view cube, how we should be orienting components to try and make top-down design techniques more efficient. But what I learned last week from Paul Munford's class, and I'm putting a link in the description, is that we can also name the origin planes. So if I'm using this convention, I can say XY plane, but at the end I can put in something like top. And what's cool about that is whenever you hover on it on screen, there's that top. And so that's just another technique to help make, oops, helps if you actually don't overwrite the stuff that you mean to keep. And then um, let's see, the YZ plane would be the right and left or whatever. So again, it's just a really simple little trick that Paul showed, but it helps make it graphically more apparent what people should be doing with the origin geometry. So I love that. Now, another technique, this is an old one. I didn't learn this at AU, but I think it's worth mentioning. I learned this from an old colleague, Dan Vang, is in our parameter table, if you embed the parameters inside your template, that also helps drive consistency with iLogic. So now I'm gonna combine Paul's technique with my colleague Nan's. We're gonna save this as a template. And I'll just call this conveyor base. Sure, I'll just leave it as is, good enough for me. So now the advantage to that is when we come up here and we start up a new component, when I go to create my sketch, there's my top plane, right plane, front plane. So it's this really interesting technique just to get everything set up the way I want. And then I'll go ahead and build a simple shape here. And because I use this conveyor with the parameters, I've got my conveyor bed width press the tab key, and I can apply my conveyor bed length. So that's all made possible because we included those parameters. And in another video, I'll show you some pretty interesting iLogic code that I learned while I was at AU. And then we'll just go ahead and apply a quick simple component to show you why this can be so valuable. There we go. And we can set these equal to each other. So the last step then would be I'm going to do a quick part here. And then set those equal as well. So I'm just going to make a quick pad for my feet. Center that guy. And then you'll see the final result when we go to extrude it. Extrude this. Ooh, somehow it got all screwed up. Delete that. We want that to just be the frame thickness. And we want to pick this point too. Apply that. And then I want to grab this one and We'll just say thickness times three. 
Nope, except that wasn't supposed to be a cut. That was supposed to be a join. No worries. Cool. So there's my component. I'll save that as my conveyor leg plate. Perfect. So now when we go to the assembly, I can place that. Um, conveyor leg plate. And just ground it. And it shows up in the exact spot. Now that was possible because my template, I had all of those origin planes, right? So I knew what the top plane was supposed to be. And my view cube and those parameters were embedded. So this is what I love about AU. I get little tips and tricks sometimes, just little mods to my day-to-day -day workflows that can improve things for, you know, for my modeling and also for my clients. So a great tip, Paul. Appreciate it. So yeah, these are the kinds of videos I'm going to knock out, just highlighting some of the really interesting things I learned from AU. I would love to hear in the comments if you were able to attend AU 2020, what were some of the cool things that you learned? Because I think even though it was virtual, it was a great opportunity to share information. So I hope you found this video helpful and have an awesome and blessed day.